Hello, this is Michael Garrick with the Popping Culture Podcast. Here with me is Donovan Shroud. He's a comedian, mailman, and the host of the podcast, Don't Go Postal. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Uh, Donovan's my first guest, so I'm super excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. So with Popping Culture, uh, we're all about podcasts. I mean, we're all about pop culture and the people that love it. Uh, do you have any pop culture moments or anything in general, dealing with pop culture that you would like to speak on or that you like or love? Uh, honestly, no. I uh, thought about it for a long time before you got me here. And the whole time, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, what the fuck is pop culture, you know? And, uh, like, what's the, you know, benefits of culture? And, uh, you know, I'm a white guy. It's like the Didn't, cul- didn't know. <laughs> you had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm letting you know now. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You came I, out the closet. All right. All right. <laughs> came out the closet as a white guy yeah, yeah. um i guess there's like a a culture as far as i don't even know man like i don't know like what culture i abide by other than just like comedy culture and mailman culture <laughs> shit like that you know okay uh, when it comes to uh, comedy in general how do you think comedy has affected pop culture in general throughout the years Whew. making people think making people laugh um, I think it's it's affected, uh, you know, elections. It's yeah, you're right. You're definitely right. Yes, uh, it's definitely brought laughter to uh, many elections. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you had to go off your um, top five comedians, who would you go with? Ooh. Uh, Mark- or top or top seven. Uh, I would just do any like no specific order. Top five, live or dead. Uh, that's that's a great question. Uh, you can mix it in. Mark Norman, Bill Burr, Mitch Hedberg, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy. I know that's not in order, but yeah, I feel you. Uh, Mark Norman. I'm trying to think. I might be mixing him up. Is that the guy that was in the Batman movie? No. Are you talking about Pete Holmes? No. Mark Norman was in the Joker movie. I'm sorry. Was that the guy? Mm-mm. Okay, uh-uh. I'm mixing them up. Somebody, Mark, is he the younger fellow? He's New York comic. He's uh, he did the YouTube special, uh, out to lunch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's funny, man. Yeah, I love him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. Mitch doesn't get enough credit. Like Mitch did a lot of work before he passed. Yeah. Um, I was first introduced to him was on um that '70s show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a little cameo. Yeah, he's yeah he's hilarious, man. Um. I would definitely agree with that um, Eddie Griffin and Rich Pryor had a lot doing with pop culture and their time periods. Eddie like, Murphy. Did I say Griffin? Eddie Murphy. I apologize. Eddie <laughs> Murphy, guys. This this is going great. Uh, no, 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 I do like Eddie Griffin. Yes. Uh, the one movie that he was in, I, I, I freaking think the about it. The new guy? Uh, I did see that one. I love that a lot. Yeah. I'm surprised you threw That's a weird movie to throw out there. Not a lot of people know about that movie. I am old, yes. That's not that old. It's like 97, it's 98. I guess that is kind of, yeah, kind of old. When you say it out loud, we, uh, I'm getting there, buddy. It's uh, like 2000s, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, the uh, movie uh, where he was uh, Undercover brother, brother. Yes. That movie. Did you see the sequel with uh, Michael J. Michael what? Jai White? Michael Jai White. Yeah, not a big fan. Not mm. a big fan. It was it was more like a Dolomite movie, if you know who that is. Oh yeah, I saw okay. it. Yeah. Okay, it's more like a Dolomite movie than it was a sequel. But um, yeah, but Eddie Murphy definitely like. How do you feel? I mean, of course they they definitely influenced a lot, especially in the comedy through their their specials. But how do you think it transferred to movies in general? Uh, once you get like a bunch of writers, I think it just starts to not be as funny i think that like you have like two or three like actual stand-up comedians and people that aren't writers those people make the best movies like movies that were written by comedians you know you look at the harlem nights with eddie murphy and all of them in there like that was written by them yes and that's why it was so hilarious yes yeah i think the writers were you're right i think it was uh um, Eddie Murphy, Rich Pryor. I know Paul Mooney had a big hand on it. Um, I'm, trying, I'm probably leaving somebody else out. Um, so the transition to, um, you said mailman culture. 
I'm very interested. I also have a friend that's a mailman, um, Dre. You know Dre. And he has great stories. You have great stories in your podcast. Like I said, guys, you should definitely listen to his podcast, Don't Go Postal. Um, I know how you said you've been a mailman for eight years or seven years? Five. 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 I'm totally off. Sorry. It's all good. Uh, in five years, have you seen it change over the year with, like, not saying competition, but as people receive other packages, I guess, not just using the postal service itself? There's been a change. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, FedEx, Amazon, UPS, all of those people are getting real lazy and ambitious with, you know, where they deliver their packages and they'll just put it in the mailbox. And it's like, come on, you're not postal service. You know, it's, it's like walk up to the front door, be a man. It's gang gang, huh? Yeah, they have no respect, man. All these FedEx people. Um, I'm not really sure what you mean other than like, I mean, it's, it's changed for me just as far as, like, when you get hired, you're called a part-time employee even though you're working, like, 50-plus hours. And you don't have, like, a specified route. You'll just help people. So if they have a route that's down, you'll take, like, a part of that route. Other people take a part of it. And you just get thrown around like a rag doll for the first two years that I worked there. And uh, once I became a regular, it's like night and day, you know. I don't have to work Sundays delivering Amazon packages anymore. I uh, have first choice on the leave compared to, like, what when I want to take off, like, for vacation compared to the part-time employees. I'm on my own route, which I can decide to do overtime list. I can decide to do eight hours just working just that and go home, which is chill. Do you think um, the human element of it, because I'm sure you do, like, on your route, you've met people, you have regulars that you, like, you know such and such more than just for the address, you actually met them in person. Do you feel like if it moved to just um, drone base, people would miss you in general? Oh, yeah. There's a postmaster. I really like him. He's, like, good at speaking, and he always, not always, but the, the talks that he's had have always been really good. And, uh, he said it before. It's just like the post, like postal employee, the mail carrier is the brand. You know, like you think postal service, you think of that carrier that you see every day. Like I'm at people's front doors every day, and uh, there is that human interaction. You know, I've talked to a lot of people on my route, know a lot of people on my route, and I tell them about Don't Go Postal podcast, and uh, so there's that. You know, I tell them I'm a comedian, they follow me and stuff. It's that's cool. And then, you know, there's carriers that have been delivering the same house for like 30 years. And then they see their kids literally grow up and become, uh, you know, parents, grandparents. So there's, I don't know the chain of command, but like, are there some people that just refuse to move up in the company, I guess, or at the post service? I mean, you can stay a mail carrier forever. Oh, man, that's, wow, that's nice. That is super nice, especially if you don't want that um, extra, you know, wait on you like that's good to know that you can just stay there that's good yeah some people decide to be supervisors and stuff i don't you get paid more but the hours are so much crazier i will tell you this postmasters at least the ones i know they do make bank yeah i i was that was like my third time going to a house that had six bedrooms and i was like what do they do they're both (laughs) postmasters i was like oh okay all right both postmasters that'll do it yes yes both were married and both were postmasters yes i was i was definitely like all right this is nice this is this is nice yeah um to get back to um pop culture in general um i was thinking about um like you say, he's you're a comedian, one of the best comedians I know in Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Oh, no problem, man. The truth is the truth. Uh, when, it, when you listen to like um, a special and you see that, you know, not saying that you you didn't expect better from someone, but have you ever heard a special where you're like, wow, this sounded, his last special sounded better than this one? Uh, do you think that just translates to the material? Or you just think maybe he just had a decline or she had a decline? Because that's what I've noticed a lot in, like, comedian culture in general. I would, well, I would say pop or comedian culture is that people really will rate them off their specials or um, they'll just say, wow, that one wasn't as good as this one. 
do you think it's just like they just we're just judging them too hard or like some people just stop trying well i've never recorded a special so i have no room to judge but i would imagine there's a lot of variables you know like where the venue is like where you decide to do the venue that could have been the problem the mic could have been could be a problem material yeah that's obviously a huge deal and yeah so i mean some people fall off for sure i don't watch enough specials to really have more of a like good perspective on this yeah, I, I agree. I uh, definitely slowed off. I had to really like them to watch a special. Enough people had to tell me to watch it. Right. For me to like really get the interest to uh, watch it. Um, Netflix has definitely took over that side, I believe. I think Amazon is trying to catch up. But when it comes to special-wise, I think um, Netflix has definitely took, well, took the most famous specials at the moment. Right. I mean, because they have that whole... A Twitter account called Netflix is a joke, right? Yes. Where it's just only stand up, mm-hmm. and it's like, wow. Yeah, I mean, they they put some good. Well, I guess for a company that's worth billions, that paid somebody twenty million ain't too much, but. I wouldn't mind if Netflix was just only stand up. Uh, I don't agree with that, just because I bought <laughs> Shutter, and I don't know if you know what Shutter is. What is oh when you can order the movies? Yep. I deliver those in the mail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's one sponsor I just um, I just lost. All right, uh, <laughs> sorry, Shutter. Uh, yeah, that's uh, no. It's, it's the app that has nothing but horror movies. They deliver to. It's literally I'm, an app. That okay, you you're, I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of uh, Netflix has a DVD.com thing. That's hilarious in 2020. Okay, where you can it's literally like a a red envelope uh, with a, a DVD in it that mm. I deliver. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Mm. That's what I thought you meant. Oh no, Shutter is literally an app, just like Netflix or Hulu, but it's nothing but horror movies, and they have their own original horror movies. Oh wow! And you can only get so scared. And uh, you like horror movies like that? Not anymore, apparently. I thought I did. You uh, got too scared? I wouldn't say I got too scared. It was just more like, why, why are these, why do they keep getting kidnapped? Like we all have cell phones. It was more of the same plot. Yeah, there needs to be more like reasons for horror i'm sure there is like there's so many things to be scared about nowadays where's the covid19 horror movie uh, probably a lawsuit waiting i think <laughs> i think that's where it's coming from uh, they film it and yeah. just everybody gets covid19 while filming exactly the horror movie that's what i feel like what would happen so that's a, a culture right there right is, uh, is like horror movies yes they have their deep culture like um uh, i don't know if you're in the horror movies at all but i think um the slasher is coming back very well. Um, I think it went away for a little while, but I think it's because um, Saw really dominated. That was more of a mind thing or a thriller, but I think slashers are going to make a big comeback. Yeah, especially like it's relevant too. You know, in the UK they can't have weapons, so like they can't have pistols or guns or anything. So they use knives. Yes. You look on the news and see somebody getting stabbed. You know. That's a, a good promotion for a, a slasher horror film. <laughs> okay, that was a reach. That was a reach. I was reaching there, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so, got me with that one, buddy. That was good. Uh, horrible marketing. I hope nobody takes that to heart. <laughs> yeah. We went viral. Uh, no, not that way. Um, so do you have um, when it comes to going back to pop culture in general um, you say you don't identify one moment but is it one thing that like do you follow sports no okay Um, do you um, do you follow like um, sticking with um, movies is there any like movies that like stick out to you from your childhood that you're like that you think may be included in pop culture? I mean, Space Jam is a, a timeless movie that even has COVID-19 in it. You know, they shut down the NBA because of the aliens that were taking the basketball players' powers. And they put, like, the hazmat suits on. They they had COVID-19 in Space Jam. I, I can believe it. <laughs> I, I can. I can believe it. You know what I can't believe? What? Michael Jordan can act. Come on, how dare you? 
He's good at everything he does, including baseball and keeping your father alive. Okay, he's great at it. This is going great. <laughs> Michael Jordan gonna hit you up like you uh, motherfucker. Fuck um, wow. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. What was the plot to that movie? That yeah, they stole their powers. It, but I agree, it does. It is. They're making a sequel, believe it or not. Yeah, fuck LeBron James. Like, I hate him. I hate him. Really? Yeah, I've always hated LeBron James. If you don't mind me asking why. He's a complaining bitch. You know, he just complains. Every time he gets fouled, he's just got like a negative attitude. He just, like, I look at him and he just seems like negative attitude to me. I, I would have to argue that everybody complains about fouls, though. Not in the old, in the, in the old NBA, but now. I, I can't name one player that doesn't flop. Flop and complain, yeah, okay. I can't name. I'll, I'll I can't really that. name one. No, I can't. It's almost like he created a trend as soon as he came into the NBA of just being a bitch. Uh, ten finals. I, just, I can't act like the bitch didn't work. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean. But I get where you're coming from. It, you stack your team enough times, you know. True. Yeah, true that. Warriors learn that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. I mean, it's basic math. If you have somebody who's Got a, I take that a back 98 now. 2K rating, you know? I take that back now. Cleveland, I can't say that was stacked. Cleveland, no, no. Yeah, I, I can't say. I, I give them that one. I but, have to but look at what Allen Iverson did. All right, so I, I did keep up with sports in, like, the past. I knew it. Okay. Allen Iverson was, like, my favorite basketball player. Nice. And what he did in 2001 of taking his team, the Philadelphia 76ers, just him. Like, he probably had, like, maybe two – other people that like helped him get there it was like him and a bunch of tall people yeah but still it's them going against kobe and Shaq in the 2001 finals and it's like that is like literally putting the team and carrying it on your back but wasn't enough and east was not a weak conference that back then they were not weak nope they were iverson had his own um shoes didn't he yeah I had his shoes for a while, the pump up ones. Oh no, I grew up with Shaq's man. Times got better for me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, my mom was really big on them Shaq's man. They're good. They last you three months, and you gotta go buy another twenty dollar pair. And uh, oh wow, really? For twenty dollars, you, you, you know. We can tie Shaq. We can tie this into the movie culture that we were doing too with Kazam, a great movie with Shaq. <laughs> You forgot about Kazam. I forget about Kazam. I just know it. I know it's not uh, amazing. What do you think is better, Kazam or Steel? What is Steel? Don't no, mind. That's not. If you don't know what it is, don't worry about it. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Is that uh, a basketball movie? No, that is. Uh, that is a real DC. Super, I want to say DC superhero movie that um, Shaq was in. What? Oh yeah, it's horrible. Like, it's, don't get me wrong. This is like early '90s. Like, he's really has like a little. Remember the rock? Um, the thing in the Fantastic Four. The yeah, first yeah, not Michael the, Chiklis. Not, yeah. not the horrible one, but the one before that with um, Jessica Alba and them. That was still horrible, but yeah, I remember. Picture that costume, but worse. It was just horrible. The but, the Fantastic Four costume? It was like the first Iron Man costume. Like when he was just when he was still in the cave. The silver one. The yeah, like gray one. Yeah, when he was still in the cave. That's how he looked. That's how Shaq looked? Yeah. Was that, his face showing? Yeah, his face was showing just a little bit. It was it was a, it's a horrible movie. Well, it's called Steel? Yeah. S-T-E-E-E-L or E-A-L? E-E-L. E-E-L? Yeah. I have to look into that. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> but Kazam, did did any other did anybody else from that movie like blow up? I know Shaq stayed Shaq, but like I can't think of any other actor or actress from that movie. I mean, if he dunked on them, probably Pretty they blew much. up from combustion. Yeah. Look at what he did to the 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 actual goals in the NBA. He took him down. True. The only movie I like Shaq was in, which he was just a cameo, was Good Burger. I didn't know he had a cameo in that. I love that movie. I love Good Burger with a passion. I had like the VHS tape, the orange one. I think Shaq would kill Keenan or uh, Kel Tom, the Kel guy from uh, Good Burger. Mm -hmm. He would kill him if he dunked on him. Yeah, definitely. Do you think you could, you could survive a Shaq dunk? I mean, he wouldn't have to dunk on me, really. Like, isn't he like seven one? Right. 
Yeah, I, Dude, he can just step on you. Yeah, pretty much. He's he's a real life nephilim. I'm sidetracking you. I'm sorry. No, no, I like where the conversation goes. I just like that everything's natural. I hope I'm doing good as a host, honestly. Um, of course, man. Yeah. Th- thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, but okay, going back to um, Iverson. Do you feel like the NBA changed a little bit with him? Because I feel like he brought a lot of attitude to the NBA that was, like, lacking for a couple of years. Because, of course, you had the Detroit Pistons. But then when it kind of died down a little bit, and then I think he really brought more attitude to the sport itself. Ah, man. Pistons. That's They, they were too, they were good in 2001, too. Didn't they have the, the three? It was, like, ben Chauncey Wallace. Billups, Ben Wallace, uh, and Rip Hamilton. Dude, those those that was like a good lineup. They did have Rip Hamilton, and I think Rashid Wallace too. So that was like four four good people. Because I remember Rashid Wallace got so many technicals from That's Rashid like, Wallace was doing it way before uh, a year or two years before LeBron when he joined. Because I was trying to think if he was good or not. I don't think I remember was the technicals, but yeah. Yeah, he got like more technicals than anybody. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that's a record to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's like the uh, the tennis player that always freaks out. John uh, McEnroe. Yeah, it's like the John McEnroe of uh, basketball. I'm a big tennis guy. I don't know if you are, but like tennis. Uh, I can talk a little bit yeah. about it. When it comes to sports culture, like I played tennis like my whole like my whole life, and I, I still play a little bit now. And when it comes to like just like bringing true passion to the game, John McEnroe was really ahead of his league. See, now you're coming out of the closet as a white man yes. talking about tennis like this. Pretty much, better. <laughs> Yeah, I, I will agree with you completely. Uh, I got my sweater upstairs. Uh, <laughs> got my cardigan and everything. Right. Yeah. But um, him and um, definitely Arthur Ashe, those two really changed tennis forever, for me in general. Uh, I know I'm missing, um, I can't remember her name now, but the female that beat. Sharapova? No, the female that like beat a man in tennis. Uh, I don't want to say Betty, but I can't, I'm not sure if I know. Isn't Sharapova a man? No. No, she's she's female, right? Yeah. She she could be a man. She could beat a man. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, especially if she was still on steroids. Yeah. She was on steroids. Mm-hmm. She got suspended for a year, I believe. I, that is right. Yeah. And then she retired recently after that, right? Oh yeah. 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 That. <laughs> Can Cannon was like she had one Cannon commercial, and they were like, "All right, there we go. Let's pull this right. one off." Like, Serena, we're sorry. Please, please come back. I remember my stepdad would just be watching it with the sound way up, just hearing her, just like, man, she sounds great. <laughs> every time she'd hit it, man, it was like, every time she hit it, it was like, it's just like a, a screech, it's just like a, not a screech, but. You gotta love your dad, man, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my stepdad, it was either that's that or Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best changeover ever. Uh, he was a cop, yeah, so he just watched Fox News all okay. the time. Okay. Um, yes, I remember hearing that on, I think that's episode three of your podcast, Don't Go Postal Podcast. So. Wow, man. You're making me blush. Oh, uh, man. You're welcome, buddy. It's, it's good. It's good. Hopefully, I can catch up with you. Um, so, did you like? Did you learn anything about, because um, I would love to have somebody, a cop, on the show to talk about that, that kind of culture. Because even when it translates to pop culture, cops, like, slowly became like a, you know, I mean, they still have pretty good shows, like de- depicting them as good guys. But then you watch on your phone, and it's kind of hard to find a clip of them being good guys. Like, does he ever discuss that with you at all, or? No, uh, me and him didn't really talk a whole lot about uh, that, like what he got into. Um, there's a couple of stories, you know, he's told me really graphic stuff I won't get into, but he's seen some shit. Of course, of course, yes, I believe so. Um, yeah, police and fire and firemen, like, or firewomen, uh, they, yeah, they've definitely, for their job, for what they get paid, they've definitely seen some horrible things. Um, I literally had a friend, um, I won't say his name last week, he, uh, two weeks ago actually got fired. Uh, true story, went to a fire, um, Literally got there, looked at the fire. There, uh, he's not on. He wasn't on the group that had to set everything up. He was on the group that had to go inside. And he literally told, I guess his captain was like, "Hey, we really gotta go in there." And he didn't want to go in. He didn't go in. And yeah. he didn't go in. Yeah. So they fired him. Yeah, he was like, he was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa we, we really gotta go in there." Wow. 
I mean, it's not fun. Everybody, according to him, everybody was safe. But I did think that was a little. It's not that. It's not. It's not that fun. Uh, but every, I mean, your friends are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, all day. Know. All day. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would agree. I believe. Um, well, I get into that job if you're not gonna like the, like if you're gonna be a firefighter. In my mind, it's like do it. Like you know what you signed up for. Like yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm according according to everyone that I else that I know because I know two other friends that are firemen, but they're like smaller um, departments, I guess. And it was like you get trained regularly. It's not like a once like once and you never train again. But I guess he just didn't think he would be a part of the people that actually had to go inside. Wow. So I thought he'd be like the station guy. Or the station guy or the guy that hooks. Because it's like three people that actually set up the, that plug the water in the hydrant, apparently. They okay. set up for the water to... And they don't go in. They just spray yeah. it. But I guess they take turns, apparently. And yeah. I guess he thought he would never have to take a turn where he had to go in, but... Man, fire right there. Yeah. Uh, fire, man. I've only been close to one fire, and that was my neighbor when I lived with my mom in Winsboro. This is years ago. I was like 15. I heard this guy's cat screaming for dear life, and he ran inside... And he came back out with a 50 inch TV. I mean, the cat made jump out the window. The cat survived. I should have. I should, I should, I should, let me tell that story the other way next time. <laughs> Just like, all right, the cat's inside. Yeah. I got to go back in. And but it was you go sad. back in and then you grab the TV. Yeah. Like, Where's the cat? Yeah, the cat was like, I got to save myself. This, this guy. Right. Imagine being a cat and seeing him just like pick the TV over you. Yeah, for in real. In the middle of this blazing fire. Yeah, I guess the guy was like, I don't have to feed, I don't have to feed the TV, I guess, but yeah, that's that's sad. TV feeds you nonsense. So. Apparently, apparently we got deep, we got deep, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. I mean, that is the thing about like what you're saying with going back to the cops. It's just like you see on the news, see on Twitter, see on TV, everywhere. It's never any good stories as far as like the cops doing stuff. You very much have to look for it. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of goes to, like, do you, is it hard to find because it's more bad cops? Or is it just they're not showing it? And it's just uh, you have to judge for yourself. And if you have friends that are cops, then you already know your opinion. But at the same time, it's like you hope your friends would say something if they know something's negative. I just know that it's a hard job. Yes. Like, my stepdad, uh, he did it for, I think, like 27 years. And then my stepbrother... Who's his? You know, his son decided to do it, and you know, I think he did it for like two or three years, and a video went viral, like super viral, of him, my brother, arresting someone. They had gotten a call about somebody just like being disruptive in a Walmart, riding around on a hoverboard, and so my brother goes there. The people at Walmart, the security at Walmart, had already got the guy outside of the building. Okay. And so my brother gets there with his female counterpart, partner, whatever. And that's right about when the video starts. Is the guy on his hoverboard and uh, just being disrespectful to my brother and the female cop. Just saying all kinds of cuss words and not really going where my brother's trying to tell him to go. And... Apparently, like, if you start cussing and stuff and um, start cussing and making a disturbance, like, people that were putting their groceries up stopped to look at what's going on. That is what's called disturbing the peace, apparently. Yeah. yeah. And that is the moment my brother decided to take him down off the hoverboard. And that's why I went, went viral. It's just like, why is this cop taking somebody down for being on a hoverboard? That was before all the, you know, it got where people were getting shot and killed. You know, this uh, this was like the, I guess the precursor to that. It's just like getting more violent police videos. But my brother, like, laid low for a while. I think he took vacation after that. And uh, I don't think anybody, like, got con contact with him, like, off the internet. So I think he's lucky in that sense. I mean, he got a vacation, too. But he stopped being a cop after that. You know, oh, he's wow. not he's not a cop anymore. Oh, okay. So, but the police officer, uh, the chief, my old football coach, his name's Duke, black guy, awesome guy. I knew he, I knew he was black when he said Duke. Yeah, awesome dude. And he's he's he backed Adam up, my brother, the whole time. Oh, shit, 
give him too much information. Is that his name? But he backed my brother up the whole time, and uh, uh, still just the, the stress of it, I think, was too much for him. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, the last thing about – I know you said you don't know much about um, cop culture or um, – do you agree that they should have took cops off TV, or do you think that was the bad choice at this time? What do you mean? Oh, the show? Yeah, cop- dude, cops is the best, like one of the best shows ever. That shit was so entertaining. Just seeing crazy meth head people just like, I don't have any drugs, sir. You can check my vehicle, and then they go to check the vehicle, and it's like, what is this pipe here, sir? You know, it's like you were obviously lying. I think Eric Andre. His last special, I think he talked about the theme song, which the theme song really does get you hype. And it is you, right, yeah. And then you watch the show, and it's like, we could have went with some more sober music. Uh, like, because uh, it's got the reggae music yeah. at the beginning. It's like, why are you playing reggae yeah, music with these cops? Yeah, we're, we're, about to, we're about to put felonies out. Like, uh, <laughs> They should bring back cops, keep the reggae music, and right at the beginning, have a cop smoking a joint. And be like, yeah, we're embracing the reggae chill aspect. I feel like that cop would just be followed by eating donuts. Like, oh, dude, like that's the whole episode. Like, getting high and eating donuts. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And it's like we have a call. Are hey, we coming? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, we're right on it. Yes. Um. So we we've had a. I believe we had a great discussion, man. Thank you for coming on to Popping Culture. Yeah, of course. Um, anytime you want to come back, just please let me know. Um, you want to say anything else to your fans? Uh, thank you for listening to Popping Culture with Michael Garrick. Uh, and my name is Donovan Stroud. Thank you for having me on this podcast. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media, it's at Donovan Stroud on Twitter or at Donovan Stroud Comedy on Instagram, Facebook. And follow Don't Go Postal Podcast uh, wherever you can find the podcast. So that's Anchor, Spotify, the podcast app, all that stuff. I think Overcast is another one. Uh, so Nice. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and have a great day. All right. Hello, this is Michael Garrick with the Popping Culture Podcast. Here with me is Don.